Well, hello, friends out there in YouTube land. Rob here. Today, we're going to be talking about mobile filmmaking. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hope you stick around. So mobile filmmaking, there's a lot to talk about here, but really we're not looking at this from a dollar point perspective. However, we will start off with equipment that costs less and then you can go on from there, up to you. One of the things we're gonna cover today is everything from editing software and how you get your uh, imagery into whatever you're going to do to edit mobile. I've got some options for you. We're gonna talk about the gear that you use to do that, a little bit about how you export it so you can tell your story, tools that are gonna help creativity, and finally, uh, wrap it on up at the end and ask you your thoughts. Tell me what you think. If you like any of this content, don't forget that you can find this at roberthamphotography.com. You can use the links down below. Support me using the PayPal if you'd like to send a cup of coffee or get this gear that you've got right here coming to you in just a moment. So let's jump right into it. We want to talk about workflow and editing. And editing is, is such an important part of what you're going to do as a mobile filmmaker. But many people think you need to go out and buy a computer or something like that. The reality is you probably have already have everything that you need to edit and begin creating content mobile uh, or any kind of any other way. This is specific to mobile, but it doesn't necessarily have to be mobile. The point is that with a modern day cell phone, most of you guys out there have a flagship iPhone or or a Samsung device or even any kind of current within the past couple of years, mobile device is more than you need to do things like micro and mobile stock photography, taking pictures of textures, uploading, editing through the apps that are on the phone, everything like that for still images or even using like iMovie on your iPhone or KineMaster, Cinemaster uh, on Android. Those are what I would choose. Even LumaFusion on your iPad, PowerDirector, all those different apps are going to allow you to have some very powerful tools at your disposal. The biggest point here is once you have an idea, you need to know where to go to get it out. So let's show you real quick my favorite tool to use, and that is actually on the iPad. I like using LumaFusion. As you can see, LumaFusion right here, we've actually got uh, some B-roll of me doing a, a modeling for some shoes and a jacket company. And we were, this is a review video. Anyways, as you can see in here, there are several different ways for me to expand and look at my different tool sets. I've got a preview window. window. I can actually change the format of how I want my layout to look, as you can see, uh, which is a very popular uh, type of style design, especially using something like uh, the iPad. When we go over here, we have multiple ways to uh, use our imagery that we import from images and photo straight to linked folders. We can have access to things like story blocks. If you have a story block subscription with LumaFusion, you can get stock music, photos, videos. Some of it is free. Some of it is premium, depending on what you have uh, as far. All of these that you don't see free beside, you have to have the, the premium a subscription, which is about $80 a year. It might be higher than that now. But it allows you to add stuff to your video that makes it really important and it makes it work. You can come down here and you can do uh, different types of edits. You can open up your folders and your video into different, just all the editing process that you might exactly uh, expect. So when we look at pieces of equipment like that, what we're really seeing is that this is a very advanced editing platform made specific to uh, of course, iPad and iPhone. I don't know that the iPhone version has the same functionality because the screen size is so much smaller, but the idea is that no matter what platform you're on, you'll be able to find something that can help you create your story. Don't forget, we do have timestamps down below, so check those to skip around to where you want, but we will be talking about tools to help your creativity here at the end, so stick around for that. We've talked about the workflow. The next thing I want to talk about is how you get whatever your finished product is to wherever it's going to be. And that's going to simply be YouTube. I would suggest starting off with YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, but definitely YouTube. The reason is the sooner you begin building your YouTube channel, the sooner that you can monetize that channel and begin creating revenue streams off that channel. So whatever content that you're creating, how good or bad you think it is, it's better than anybody else that is not doing anything. So your attempt already gets a high five. If it happens to be something worthwhile, you won't know that until you actually begin uploading and seeing what your viewers and how your interactions are going. Recognizing that your channel may not get the type of content interaction that you want, you'll have to branch out from there and start putting clips like YouTube Shorts, moving stuff over to TikTok. But all of that comes from one piece of media that is multi-purpose. Just like we showed you here with the iPad, once we create that media and we have something that resembles a finished product, you then dice that product up into smaller sections to be able to go out to the interweb so that you can get 
uh, that interaction that you want. So your seven minute video on YouTube might be a 30 second smoker or teaser over on Instagram or one, uh, one minute on Twitter or maybe 30 seconds over on TikTok. You need to use that footage with different overlays, narrative and, and graphic in order to bring people to your channel. None of this happens unless you actually start something and do something. So my encouragement to you is to go do it now. Now that we've gone ahead and talked about that beautiful part, we're actually going to talk about the gear. The gear, we, we've got a lot on the table to share with you. And let's go to that little lower kind of look. Um, I want to talk about the fact that you probably already have an iPhone as well as an iPad, which is this right here. But we've got audio equipment. We've got cameras on gimbals. We've got neutral density filters. We've got uh, lenses, cheapos, we've got screens, HD screens for bright viewing. We've got full frame cameras, we got uh, APS-C, we've got even a uh, little digital camera, well, a digital Instax, Digi Instax, an instant camera like this. We've got lights, right? <laughs> All kinds of stuff. So the idea here is that there are many different things that you need in order to really bring your photography game uh, up. The reality is, if you do all of your content creation on your phone, uh, your phone could be lost or damaged and your phone could fill up pretty quickly. I generally don't like to use my phone for the content capture unless I have to. Of course, I will because it, it works that way, but I would prefer to keep my phone as a viewing or remote interaction device. For example, these lights right here by WeLight are really cool. I'm going to turn this one on. And this light right here will interact with my phone in the WeLight app so that I can actually... Uh, turn it on, change colors, set the mood, things like that directly on the phone. Let me pull up that little Wii Light app. So the app right there opens up and then I can well, I can do all kinds of stuff with it. We're going to turn this off for now. Okay. Your phone will give you that kind of interactivity specifically with my number one suggestion. If you're just out there getting ready to go, I think that the DJI Pocket 2 is really the best place to be. And the reason is quite simple. Uh, the Pocket 2 is a really cool device that gives you a stabilized shot, which is generally, well, as you can see, uh, pretty nice. It's a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor, pretty easy to use, and it's relatively accessible, around 300 bucks uh, for the device. I have the Creator Kit here. The Creator Kit adds the do-it-all handle, which you will need if you want to add a microphone to your inputs, right? So we get to do it all handle. We put that stuff together. And now you've got a wireless mic that can go on your talent like here, as well as have your camera somewhere else. Also, if you wish to hook this up for more creativity, you can actually uh, include a different type of microphone system because you'll have the ability to have the expansion of the extra outputs that you need right here to monitor or take any mic that you might currently have and turn it into that system. The reason this is so important is because it also comes with a wide angle lens. Although we get a wide lens on there, uh, the very first lens that comes in the creator combo kit, actually, I guess it might come someplace else. You try doing this with your face stuck behind a microphone. It's tough, guys. Uh, allow This comes with it. You also get the wide angle lens adapter. Now you can get some accessories that can help you out quite a bit, but one of them that I like that it comes with as well, of course, is the tripod, this little screw on tripod. So with this entire setup right here, you now have pretty much everything that you need to go out and vlog, have a good time out and about in the world and create really nice high content quality. Uh, the other thing about this is the video looks great and it's stabilized. So you can get that wide vlog shot right there. You can do your vertical video like you want right there for Instagram uh, or, or wherever, or TikTok, and it just works well. The other thing that I like about it is you can also buy uh, neutral density filters, right? That allow you to take more control over your settings for shooting cinematic frame rates in bright sunlight. And you can also get a set of wide uh, neutral density or variable density filters right there as well. So you've got a bunch of different options. These right here are from Feel World, I believe. Yeah, Feel Well. Yeah, I like a lot of their stuff. These are from Feel Well. And they just work out really, really nice. So for about 350 bucks, you've got full manual to auto, the ability to take beautiful um, photos in the 3 by 4 aspect ratio, also to do wide angle or 16 by 9 video, as well as at 4K 60 at 100 megabits per second. You can save some of that bit rate for space savings if you'd like and get away with around 70 to 80 megabits per second when you're editing it. Makes it pretty simple. 
The only thing that you won't get with this is a zoom, right? But you can put this on the end of a selfie stick and actually get some really cool drone looking or gimbal style shots. Pretty, pretty nice. Now we're going to move on to something else. We talked about that uh, you won't get a zoom. I think that if you're going to grab one, you could grab a little handheld pocket camcorder. But if you're going to go that route, there are some specifics that I think would deserve their own video. So I'm not going to talk about camcorders today. But if you were able to pick up a, a small APS-C camera, something that's got a long zoom, that will be more helpful to you, I think, than a wider aperture. And here's why I say that. Um, a wider aperture will help you in low light. Most modern cameras are really great in, uh, in bright light uh, as well as low light. They're pretty good in low light. The bigger sensor will already help you quite a bit in low light. When you get a longer zoom, even if the aperture is a little bit more small, or smaller aperture, uh, you will get the ability to have more uh, distance that you can go. So it changes your shot looks from your wide to your medium to your telephoto, your detailed close-up, stuff like that. Plus, if you're going to use it for any kind of imagery or portraits, that longer focal length sometimes can help you get a shallower depth of field or more background blur if that's what you want. So getting a, picking up a kit that has something like uh, up to a 18 to 105, which is like 24 to 150 in full frame equivalent, F4 on APS-C is more like F6, F5.6 on full frame. So yeah, it's not as fast of a lens as your prime lenses, but it also gives you the ability to reach out and touch someone pretty nicely with that depth. Uh, this right here is the A6500, one of my favorite cameras, image stabilized, great face tracking, auto tracking, and you can kick it up with the um, 18 to 105 f4 zoom, which is a power zoom, which gives you the ability to have those beautiful silky smooth zooms, which is really nice. You will want to use the steady shot function on here. It works very well. New iterations in the 6600 work even better with additional autofocus means and such like that. I have a battery grip on this because it's helpful when filming, but the battery grip is not organic to Sony. This is a third party because Sony does not make a standard battery grip for this camera. So augmenting it with a battery grip is very, very helpful. As we continue to look around, there are other factors that are going to be uh, good for what you're doing, so to speak, with this camera. But one of the number one things you can get is a pretty cheap $25 uh, CCTV lens. These lenses usually have very sharp characteristics with fall, with a quick sharpness fall off from the center focus, wherever that might be. And it gives almost um, a blurriness around the edges. So it can be a great way to get into some very atmospheric photography, usually, or videography. Usually with these lenses as well, you're going to have the ability to get uh, a really nice low depth of field with a with a really wide open aperture, this one being 1.4. So when you look at a camera like this, we're able to take that lens off and then you get a smaller system, which just a little bit more approachable. Yeah, I just had the wrong lens. This is for my Micro Four Thirds camera. In any event, as you can see, we're on right there. Not a particular problem. Okay, and so it changes up your entire setup. So if you get something that's a little bit more hand packable, you do have to manually focus, but uh, lens works great. Also, this is an uh, M-mount lens. It's a screw-on type lens into an adapter plate. So one of these lenses will come with multiple plates that you can use all over the place for the type of photography that you're trying to do. It's a lot of fun, and I find that just the ability to use additional lenses like that when you're out and about is going to be a big step in your photography moving forward, especially when you're beginning with filmmaking. Stepping up from there, you're going to go into something like this. This is the Panasonic S5. If you have the ability to pick up the S5, it's on sale, usually around $1,600 body only, around $1,800 with the uh, 20 to 60 kit lens. That lens is amazing, especially for vlogging. When you look at the camera specifically as a, a full frame camera, all of these things are equating to full frame. So even at the 3.5 to 5.6 aperture that it has, it's a full frame equivalent because it's on a full frame camera. It's going to give you a really great look, depth of field, things like that. Today, we've got it outfitted with 24 to 105 f4, a lens that I absolutely love for its macro capability and its portraits. It's pretty nice in low light as well. F4 is pretty wide for a full frame camera. It's not like F4 would be on a uh, an APS-C camera. So if you're coming from those different worlds, there's quite a bit more photo gathering capability or light gathering capability on a full frame F4 uh, than it is on APS-C. You also get additional tools and handling characteristics. At this point in time, the heaviness and the size of the camera is going to begin helping you with stabilization in your shots because it's gonna get rid of micro jitters. 
But when you get into something like this, you're going to start wanting to look at a gimbal. All of these things can be avoided directly if you just use happy-go-lucky little uh, DJI Pocket 2 right there. Uh, the gimbal on the stick makes it real easy to use, and it's a lot of fun. You just don't get the zooms or the additional lens options that you want. Moving on along, when we think about those types of things, you are going to need variable neutral density filters. Feelwell is a good company. Lots of that. They go right on the end of the camera. They even come with really innovative uh, lens uh, covers that are magnetic, which are really nice. So that will help you achieve your cinematic rates, uh, frame rates outside. If you don't know about that, I've got a video on that. Check it out over there somewhere. Search the channel. When we're talking about gear, also, we want to make sure that we're talking about Monitors. If you can't see what you're doing, then what you're doing is a lot harder. So you want to make sure you've got a nice monitor, a bright view monitor. This is 2800 uh, nits outside. It's very bright and makes makes that I can see it. It also gives you some additional false color capability, things like that, as well as uh, the ability to have focus peaking on the monitor, which is, well, very helpful. If you could imagine the screen on here compared to the screen on here, Right? There's just a lot of difference there, and so you're going to want to be able to see that. Finally, we're going to talk about audio. When you get into audio, you don't need this gigantic uh, expenditure in audio. You can use something just as simple as this Zoom H1N, one of my favorite recorders. Throw in your pocket, easy to go. It's got some pretty nice uh, microphone capsules on the front, easy to control, uh, and it comes with the 24-bit 24 at 96 kilohertz sample rate, which is a nice... Uh, recording sample rate for this and the ability to have soft press buttons on your play pause and start and stop recording line out to headphones line in from a microphone hold and a micro usb capable i wish it was USB C, but that's the way it is we've also got a tripod mount right there so it could very easily go on top of a camera just like this if you needed to augment your current video um, audio specifications and with this right here you can even put a little windscreen on top of it one of the things that I like most about this is that it's easy if you needed to add a lavalier to this and put it in someone's pocket and just press record you could then sync between the two in post it's a pretty simple thing clapperboard or the software will do it for you there is other software that we didn't talk about here but as we talk about audio you might want to move into something like this if you're using you know, a camera that does not have wireless built in. That's the nice part about the Creator Kit from the DJI Pocket Go. It's got, or the Pocket 2, it's actually got the uh, wireless microphone built into it. So you've got one person wireless mic already built into the entire set. If you don't have that, you can get something like the Kumika or the Rode Wireless Go 2 or things like that. These just allow for one, two, three, or four additional microphones to be connected wirelessly to go into a camera from your talent. It makes it pretty simple. Generally speaking, these work on the 2.4 gigahertz system, uh, which means they're useful worldwide. Although you can get some UHF and VHF systems, I'd stay away from them unless you specifically know that uh, your area allows for transmission on those frequencies. Uh, this is going to work well, and I use it quite a bit. Man, we've talked a lot about that already. I think I think we need to talk about stuff that can help your creativity. Now, before we get into that, everything we've talked about here, we'll have links down below. So if you like any of that, don't forget to use them. Send me a cup of coffee through Amazon or PayPal if you want. And the number one thing I'm going to talk about right here is this is the Instax Mini Evo. I really like this camera. I've given it some tough reviews online specific to the image quality of the digital file saved. Go watch one of those. This isn't a video about that. But here's the deal. When you're out and about, if any of your content uh, might be created in a space where you will be interacting with people and you want to interact with them in a way that helps them say yes to your requests, well, the camera like this could be very helpful because once you uh, get talking to them and you begin building rapport, people love to have a photo of themselves right? And you can print that out just by sitting there talking to them and uh, give them a little souvenir of the interaction that you have created with them. It's really quite cool. So we've got that printing out right now. And as it prints out, you'll see it just pops up from the top. And what this becomes is an icebreaker, right? So as an icebreaker, this type of thing is really quite cool. I'm going to turn that little camera around right there. Let you be able to see it as it kind of develops. I'll actually turn it right side up for you as well. Well, that won't work. Anyways, 
it doesn't have to be this particular camera. It could be any number of cameras, but these types of things are going to help you break the ice when you meet someone new. And that's the important part of what I'm talking about. When you want people to say yes, you need to be as intrusive, as unintrusive as is possible with little freebies that make people excited. If you happen to use one of Fujifilm's printers, you can actually print the website in a QR code on the image, right? That prints out by selecting that in the app on your phone, which would allow you to then give them basically a business card with their picture and the contact information of how to get whatever it is that you just did with them, which is pretty cool. Next thing I'm going to talk about is really low tech, but these are books, right? I use notebooks for pretty much everything. When it comes down to uh, uh, getting my thoughts out, I will put them down on paper. I will go ahead and uh, write it out. I'll put my meetings down, things like that, all kinds of stuff that goes on in these little notebooks, right? And I go back to them and look at them later on because they are a sense of inspiration as well as they help me remember what it is that I wanted to do. So I got these going back for years. They're Moleskine books or the Moleskine books are the ones that I really like. These are the Kahers or the Karhers, however you say it. I don't know. I'm not German. And the uh, they're 10 bucks for a set of three. I, I just can't beat it. I tend to like the books that have no lines in them. I'll settle for dots or grid paper. I have tried out the field notes. They're pretty nice as well. And I just enjoy them quite a bit. One of the things I like about Moleskine notebooks is in the back, you'll see that there's actually a little, uh, there's my drone license right here. There's paperwork, there's a little file holder for your paperwork that you can put in and then you can file all kinds of different logs and stuff like that. But it just keeps your stuff organized. Okay, we've talked about a lot of things. The final accessory that's gonna help you become creative are mounts, any kind of little mount, tripod holder, things like that, because it's going to allow you to put your camera in a space where you wouldn't normally expect to put the camera here, you can pick these up. They're just ridiculously expensive on Amazon. I don't necessarily know why, but for um, five or seven dollars, if you can find these little hookups, you will enjoy them. And then if you can get any of the little tripod feet like this, you know, five or seven dollars, find them. Sometimes you can find these which are tension locked under a hex key, which allow you to set angles and stuff pretty easily. I would get those if you can, but I wouldn't pay more than ten dollars, eleven dollars for them. Just because this is a consumable piece, you will use it and you will lose it over time. So don't spend too much money on it, but spend enough to get the one that works the way you want it. My friends, we have talked a lot today about this whole entire creative process. The final thing I'd like to throw back to you is have I missed something in this mobile workflow? We haven't necessarily talked price points. We've just talked capabilities. My number one suggestion is actually just this little Pocket Go right here, this DJI Pocket 2. I think they changed the name of it because why wouldn't they to make it more difficult for you to remember from generation to generation? You can also begin doing all of this on your phone. You don't necessarily need to buy anything if you already have this. People often ask me, Rob, what's the best camera to buy so I can learn photography? And I tell them, use your cell phone. Most people fall out of photography and videography, and they're going to spend a thousand or two thousand dollars or five hundred dollars or some amount of money that they don't need to spend. If you can't make a photo that is compositionally interesting on your phone, buying a camera won't necessarily help you. So my original suggestion to everyone is just look in your pocket before you look online. After you look in your pocket and you're able to create interesting compositions uh, with the with the tool that you currently have, that's when you can look at beginning to create interesting compositions with a new tool. Remember, creativity is about learning processes and creating familiarities with those processes that allow you to see things differently. That's all creative creativity is. So when you start using a new tool, that's when you will most likely be create the most creative with it, in my opinion, because you aren't taking that tool for granted. You're looking at that tool with new eyes, fresh eyes. When people show me a new camera, sometimes it's hard for me to get excited about it because I've used so many cameras. But the reality is, if I could step back, and I try to step back as much as possible, but sometimes I don't step back enough to see just the benefits of the different types of cameras that are out there and what they can actually add to your workflow. You can't buy into good composition, but you can buy into tools that will help you create good composition once you understand what that is. 
Remember, story for first, everything else second. Guys, I'm Rob with Robert Hand Photography. I hope you have found this helpful. If you did, don't forget to leave me comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think, so keep the conversation going. Use the Amazon links or send me a cup of coffee through PayPal. I'll catch you all on the flip side. I want to say bye for now.